Regardless of who you spoke to today, it was that unique and irrepressible character of EJ that they all talked about. He inflicted that character on everyone he touched, on, on football. It's indelibly printed on football and will be there forever. Just that personality, I think, easy going, down to earth, and a very lovable guy. I think we all loved him. Norm Beeman, 10 News. The news of EJ's death brought tears to many in the western suburbs. They had watched him develop from a tough teenager into a modern-day football icon. Thousands rang or went to the Western Oval, many total strangers simply wanting to express their grief. And the sad news proved too much for that other famous Footscray son, as Alan Russell reports. The son of Footscray paying tribute to Mr Football, Doug Hawkins with a wreath in the centre of Western Oval, where both he and Ted Whitten held court for many years. Earlier, a tearful Hawkins was reunited with former teammates, none too sure how to deal with the death of a friend. Yeah, Teddy's the greatest, you know, he's Mr Football and that always remained the same and um, I'm sure all the people the rest of the suburbs will be feeling the same way I am at the moment, so... Yeah, it's pretty hard. Pretty tough. He's never going to die and he's, never, he's always going to be alive and well in, uh, in football circles and especially around in the western suburbs of Melbourne. There was a constant procession of friends and fans to the Western Oval. Many left flowers outside the club or just came to pass a few moments of respect. Among them, the third cousin, EJ, barely knew. Were you surprised to see that there has been this sort of response, the club inundated no. with call? No, not in the least. Not in the least. Teddy is the western suburbs. He's, um, he's part of everyone's extended family expected. All over the Western Oval, images and reminders of the legend. The club's only premiership flag, a Witten era flag, at half-mast. The cheer squad hastily redoing its weekend banner. The club itself still coming to grips with the loss. He just touched so many people and uh, he just had that that aura about him that um, um, just related to everyone. Elsewhere in the western suburbs, acknowledgement of a great man. It seems no one was untouched. I was playing a CD with football songs on it, with the Victorian football song on it. And I just couldn't, I wasn't crying profusely, but the tears were just there. It was a shock, terrible shock. Big loss. He's going to be missed. He's going to be missed a lot. I call him missed, isn't he, uh, Ted, when he is the western suburbs. The football club is keen to provide its own special tribute to EJ. There's already talk of possibly approaching his family to hold the funeral service here. At the very least, the club would like to see a memorial service staged at the ground to enable EJ's thousands of friends to give a final and fitting farewell. Alan Russell, 10 years. Ted Whitten was always known for his great courage on the field, in recent years for his courage in life. Despite his five-year battle with prostate cancer, he continued to give his all to the game he loved so much. Come now. Teddy Whitten always seemed indestructible, but last December he and his son made an announcement which shocked the football world. Four years ago, my father had an operation on his prostate. We were told then that cancer had developed. Suffering a speech problem, his son Ted Jr. spoke on his father's behalf, no, all. reassuring no. all that his determined say, father was ready we'll as ever to tackle whatever to came fight. before him. As you say, he'll be fighting all the way. Don't worry about that. As you know, football's been his life, his love, and he'll be at every game he can be at. Although his public appearances became less frequent, Witten still remained involved with the sport he so loved, and his fans were appreciative. Even when awarded a place in the Sporting Hall of Fame in March, he remained philosophical. It's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. And I thank you all. Despite his growing battle with illness, Witten remained defiant. In April, he continued his strong involvement with the game, even tossing the coin at the start of this Geelong Melbourne clash. But it was only a month later he suffered a stroke. Then in June, a second stroke which left him almost blind. But that still wasn't enough to keep him from the game. Well, he's got the radio going full time at the moment. Don't let the big be down. Following the advice he'd so often given, less than two weeks later, he took to the field once again. Good on you, Teddy. 
This time for the unforgettable lap of honour before the Victoria South Australia State of Origin clash. Ted, we won this one for you. Witten's great courage and inspiration to many, especially to winner of the EJ Witten medal, Tony Lockett. To win that medal will probably, you know, be one of the proudest moments in my life. While a community mourns the death of Ted Witten, today a time...